now that the position is sorted let's try to figure out the rotation so let's go back and we need to add a new transform so this transform was the translation we are going to create a new one for the rotation i'm going to put it before so the rotation happens before the translation and i'm going to do exactly the same that i did before i'm going to add a channel so the rotation is driven by a noise I'm going to play with the parameters and I'll let you know in a bit what values I'm using. So I set the value to Brownian and the number of integrals to 4, amplitude to 100. And if you have a look at the rotation, this is what we have. Since we know that the translation is working, for now I'm going to just deactivate the translation and we are going to focus only on the rotation. And before we move on, I told you before that the transformation needs to happen after the packing. So I think it's time now to explain you what's going on. To compare, activate the peak before the packing. Let's open the geometry spreadsheet and go to primitives. Make sure you hide all other attributes and that you have a look at what is inside the intrinsic values. And you can see you have some values here. You have bounds, closed, a bunch of different attributes. And let's now activate the configure and you will see that after the geometry it's packed a lot of new attributes appear here many of them are quite useful but in this case we are only going to focus on the transform attribute you might want to have a look at the packedful transform too but i'm not going to talk about that one in this video if you have a look at the transform you will see that it contains a matrix which is a 3 by 3 matrix 3 by 3 matrices only contain rotations and scale they don't contain the translation and that's fine because in this case we only want to worry about the rotation another thing you can see here is that the matrix it's identity matrix you can see that it's one 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. I'm going to explain much more about matrices in future videos, but for now, the only thing you need to know is that an identity matrix, it's a matrix that contains no changes. So it's basically a matrix that it's on the origin with no changes in scale or rotation. After I apply the rotation, you can see that that matrix changes. And that's not because we are using a noise. I'm going to show you that if you put a transform and you connect the transform to the pack geometry, the, the intrinsic transform is still the identity matrix, but once you add some rotation, then those values start changing. So from reading the transform information, you can know how much the geometry is rotated, where it's changing in a scale or not. But in this case, we don't need to do anything else. We just need the rotation. If you transform before the pack geometry, what's going to happen is that the transformation is going to happen. Then the geometry is going to be packed. And then it doesn't really matter that the geometry is rotating. The intrinsic transform, it's going to always be the identity because the packing is happening after the rotation. So the, transfor the transformation is not happening after the intrinsic transform was created. So we are not modifying the intrinsic at all. And because we are going to be working with those intrinsic attributes, you need to make sure that the transform is after the packing. Now that we have that in mind, let's go back to the DOP network target follow and we will create a new point wrangle i want to carry on using the same formula even for the rotation so we can copy some values or some lines of code from this target position so we don't need to write them again from scratch let's copy up to float c and paste it on this new wrangle let's make sure that this is copied and let's change the values to 0 point to 1 and 0 0.5 and because this is going to be looking for the target geometry, we also need to make sure that this is plugged in the second input. So up to this point, everything is exactly the same. There's no difference whatsoever on what we have done before. But rotations are a bit more complicated than the position. And if you have tried to play with that, you might know that you have to go into the land of matrices and quaternions. I'm not going to explain a lot about that on this video, but I'm going to tell you what you need to know in order to get this to work. So the first thing I need to get are the transforms of my geometry and the target because i want you to be completely sure that you understand that there's a transform matrix here that represents the rotation i'm gonna show you after the time shift that the intrinsic transform is not changing but the target transform is changing because the rotation is happening so what we need to know or what we need to find is a matrix that transform this matrix into this matrix and we will call that matrix the offset matrix i'm gonna explain more about that in the next video Let's dive back into the DOP network, target follow. And before creating the offset matrix, we need the actual matrix of my current geometry and of the target. 
In order to extract this transform intrinsic, we need to use a function called prim intrinsic. And prim intrinsic lets you access any sort of intrinsic attribute that you have here. And I want to store that intrinsic attribute inside a variable of type matrix three. And I'm gonna call it my TM, which stands for my transform. So you can see the function, it's called prim intrinsic and it asks for a few arguments. The first one is the geometry that we want to read. In this case, it's my own geometry coming in the input zero. The attribute that I want to read, it's the transform attribute. And I want to read it from my own point. So this will give you the matrix that you are seeing. And now we need the intrinsic transform of the target. You can see they are both the same, but that's because at the first in the first frame, they are the same matrix because they have the same rotation. I'm gonna copy and paste this line. I'll change my TM to anim TM. And in this case, I want to change this to one because we want to read what's coming in the second input. And instead of reading from my own point number, I want to read from the point that it is stored inside FGO. So now we have everything we needed to create the offset matrix. I'll write the line of code here, and then I'm gonna explain you what that line of code is doing. Let's create a new matrix three i'm gonna call it offset actually just to keep it consistent let's call it offset tm i'm gonna invert my tm and i'm gonna multiply that times my anim tm and this is something you can memorize many people do this by memory but i think it's much more useful to know where this is coming from why are you multiplying the inverse on the left and not on the right and why are you actually inverting my tm and not inverting anim tm because every single one of those options will give you a different result and if you don't know why you are using this exact approach you might not know why you are getting results that you are not expecting so let me use photoshop to try to explain what's going on imagine for one second that you have two matrices so the first one it's m which is my matrix is the matrix of the geometry that it's coming in the first input and i have a target matrix so that's the geo the matrix that i actually want to reach i want to find one matrix that if i multiply times m it's gonna give me this one because i want to align m to be the same as t basically i want to make this equality true if you remember in maths like in a school what you need to find is a value that you can put here that multiplies m so i'm gonna create an a new matrix called x and this x is a matrix that we actually don't know we don't know what these values are but we know m and we know t because we already store them as values on, on on the attributes sorry on the variables so we need to solve for x now you might remember from school that if you have this kind of formula so you have a times v equals c and you want to solve for b what you need to do is on each one of these sides divide b so this gets rid of this one and then you end up with a equals c over b and that will solve for a but there's a problem it's that we are dealing with matrices and you cannot do the same with a matrix but you can do something similar you can use the inverse so what we need to do is solve for x so we, so we need to find a way to get rid of this m so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna write again this same thing below now keep in mind that this the, all these things are matrices we are not using anything else everything here is a matrix so what i'm going to do is left multiply times the inverse of m if you remember some of the rules about matrix multiplications you might know that if you multiply a matrix times its inverse that's going to result in the identity matrix so it means that this it's going to be the identity times x and because you are left multiplying here times the inverse of m you need to keep this equality you need to also do the same here Something you need to keep in mind is that if you left multiply on one side, you need to left multiply on the other side. You cannot left multiply here and right multiply here. It needs to be the same. It needs to be consistent. Matrix multiplication changes if you change the order. So we know that these two things are now the identity. So this ends up like identity times x. It's equal to the inverse of my own matrix times the target matrix and we know that the identity times x is going to give you x so the whole thing ends up being x equal m minus one over t and this gives you this matrix x which is the offset so we know that the offset is equal to the inverse of my own transform times the transform that we are trying to reach which is the target and that's exactly what's going on here so now that we have that we actually got rid of the simplest part now this was kind of an exercise of imagination for me because I needed to find a way to modify the rotation. 
and I wanted to do it by modifying the W attribute or the angular velocity attribute. So I needed to find a way to extract the rotation component of this matrix and then use that rotation component to modify W. So because I don't want to make this video longer than it should, I'm going to just pause for now and I'll see you in the next one.